That, that's me, your lighthearted host and expressionist. And this, this is my podcast, Love and Lies. Okay, everybody, I am here with, we're going to have to call her, what do you want to be called today? L. L. And the reason why I chose this for the first episode of Love and Lies is because sex sells. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and L, tell me about yourself. Tell me, I've got you here. You're a sugar baby. You have, you live the lifestyle with having sugar daddies. I do. So tell me a little bit, like how, what do you like about this? Uh, my most favorite part would be the gifts, the money, as well as the traveling, the intellectual companionship that you get with somebody who's much more mature. Um, it's all around amazing. I think when you and I started talking about this, I really walked away when we got done with our conversation thinking to myself, wow, I mean, you literally are learning about money. You're learning about, you're saying that this sugar daddy cares for you, cares for your safety and your well-being. And so it's not like it's this cheap kind of thing, but you're actually living a lifestyle of kind of like a glamorous lifestyle. I do. So you, you get, I'm looking at your Louis Vuitton bag right now, <laughs> <laughs> which is, you know, I think the last time I saw you, we were with another uh, different bag. I think um, you probably have a collection by now. I do. Okay. Um, so tell me, so what do you like most about it? The lifestyle itself? Is it the money truly? It is money, but that's not everything. Um, the bigger part of it is the experience, the entire experience. Are we talking about the sexual experience or are we talking about? That usually comes later, but that's a part of it as well. Okay. So um, tell me about, you said to me when we last talked about this, that there was a take care of me now, take care of the you later. What hear, does that mean? The, hearing, the, the saying that I hear is, if you take care of me now, I will take care of you later. Um, usually they're not super elderly, but they're elderly men in their late 30s, Can, mid 40s. Is that elderly? <laughs> oh my god, that's my age. <laughs> is that elderly to me? Okay, so these men are age, age range between. They're not elderly, so they're not in 80, 90. They're just older. Or, they're just older. Um, not that I'm not older myself as well. They are older men. They're very educated. They are very wealthy. They are very well connected. They are very well rounded individuals. They are just, everything is just all together for them. It's just a complete experience. They teach you about stocks and bonds and investing in yourself. And um, they taught me about Charles Schwab's accounts and setting them up for my children. They're actually setting me up for my life, not only myself, but my children as well, because they want to see me do well, because they actually care about me that much. So does it take now, she just mentioned that she has children, and I know that's probably, people want to, are going to want to know about that too. Um, but does it, do they do they start caring for you after a certain amount of time or a certain amount of money that they've invested? I would say time. Um, they're not so much worried about their money. They're more so worried about their well-being and their time. Being very busy doesn't give you the allotted time that you need to have a regular relationship or a marriage or what most normal people want or crave on a daily basis. They don't get. So the exchange is money, but they actually, this isn't just something that's about sex. This is about companionship, it is. a relationship. It's 100% uh, it's about a relationship. No matter which way you look at it, it's going to be a relationship. And do you, are you like committed to them when you call this a relationship? Because for me, I think, I mean, you're not going on Facebook in a social status of in a relationship. This is just completely, totally between the two of you. 
And is it considered a committed relationship? It depends on your situation. Because you've got a very different situation because she's actually also married. True. She's married. And you not only have one sugar daddy, but you have two sugar daddies. <laughs> Very true. And, and you're, are, you're committed to each one of them. I mean, this relationship. So you're having a relationship with three different men. True. And your husband knows about this. He does. He knows everything. So wh what, so tell me about that. Cause that's very interesting. <laughs> Um, well, my husband and myself. Because that's unusual. It is very unusual. Um, we've been married for over 10 years. And a long, that would long be considered time. a successful marriage. I mean, that's longer than any marriage I've ever had. But anyways, that's just like the note. <laughs> that's another story. That's another story. This is a whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but 10 years, no, wait a minute. 10 years, this day and age, that's considered successful. It is. And um, it started with um, one day we had a girlfriend, you know, we were just having fun and we had a girlfriend join us. And eventually, uh, to be 100% honest, it turned into an open marriage. And in my own personal feeling, I love my husband so much that I would let him do anything that he wanted at almost any cost, as long as I was perfectly okay with it. So... For me, I was so in love with my husband, my only want other than sexually to go out and to explore was to have fun. And that's what I got. So you guys have this experience where you bring in another woman and now it opens up this conversation and then you guys both agree that you can see other people? Mm -hmm. As long as we both know about it and we're 100% honest. Okay. So now this open marriage and now you are you have your sugar daddies. So the husband knows about the two sugar daddies. Does the two sugar daddies know about the other? One sugar daddy does not know about my husband or the other one. And the other sugar daddy knows about everybody. Okay. And then does... So do one sugar daddy knows about the husband? And the other, in the other sugar daddy, yes. Okay, so everybody's in total agreement except for the one. The one. Um, and so, what would happen if he found out? Why wouldn't you tell him? He is of Hispanic heritage, and for them, they're very. Um, this is mine. Very. Um, kind of controlling, I would say. I'm Hispanic myself, so. Possessive, okay. <laughs> yeah, a little possessive, just a little bit. Um, so that kind of plays a big role in it. Um, so the listeners may also want to know, which is another twist in this story. Now, let me stop and ask you, are all sugar daddy stories like set up like this? Are they all kind of like, you know, it's not so cut and dry, you give me money and I'll do this, or are they all different arrangements that I would say it all depends on the girl herself. Every girl is different in what they're looking for as far as a sugar daddy and an arrangement. Some girls are just looking for advice about life and investments and the world and the way things work. Some are looking for just money. Some are actually looking for companionship. So it kind of depends on the girl, if you ask my opinion. Okay, so why wouldn't they, fall, why, why wouldn't they just find a relationship? Why, why does money, well, no, the women, I mean, if they're, if they're into companionship themselves and they're looking for somebody that's older, that will, it's not, not, not just a regular relationship. There's still this understanding that this isn't going to go any further than. Uh, to be honest, about 50% of sugar baby, sugar daddy relationships do end up becoming normal relationships. And a lot of them do end up getting married. Are you serious? Yes. Where do you get this from? <laughs> I, um, know. <laughs> I belong to a lot of, this sounds really crazy, okay. but I belong to a lot of um, like groups on social media um, that are other sugar babies and we kind of all get together and we talk and it's like a community. We help each other stay safe. We help each other with opinions, things that are going on, questions, concerns. It's like a community of us. Really? Yes. Wow, that's interesting. Um, and it's not all just, the community is not just sugar babies. It's 
it's a community of what they consider um, sex workers. So it's, you know, dancers, it's escorts, it's sugar babies, it's models, it's a little bit of everything. Okay, so what's the difference between a model and a sugar baby and somebody who's an escort? Uh, an escort is somebody who you usually find um, on some type of an ad or some type of a company and they come, it's an hour, they get paid, they leave, that's it, it's over. Prostitution? Pretty much. Okay. Uh, pretty <laughs> much. Glamorizing it's, it. It's a lot less glamorous. Um, I'm assuming I know these answers, but I just want to make sure. <laughs> sugar baby is somebody who is going to be younger. Most, a majority of the time, you're not going to be sleeping with them for quite some time until you gain trust, a relationship, some... With the sugar daddy? Yeah, and some okay. likability. Oh, yeah. All right, so there's time invested in this. Oh, yes, there's time, most definitely invested. Time, the way, everything. When you get dressed up, it's the dinner, it's all one big thing. Um, so it's, is, it more, is it like an, a performance as well? You know, like you're, you're getting ready because this is now an event. He's calling you, you guys are arranging to have dinner, so you have to look a certain way. Um, show up knowing that this is what you have to, you know, you have to be in good spirits. You can't just show up bitching about your day, right? I unless mean, you're me. Unless you're you. <laughs> um, but, but you do. You have to show up and then you're supposed to be completely into them. And it's almost like you have a role to play. But for me personally, I feel like I'm just going to have an experience. Okay. And is that every time that you're with them? I guess yes. I would imagine. Oh, wow. Okay. So when you talk about time, um, the listeners would also be probably surprised. You're actually a business owner. I am. You have a successful business. I would consider it successful. It is. And you've had that also for a couple of years. I have. And you have your, as you mentioned, a mother mm -hmm. and you're married and you have a suburban lifestyle. I do. I live in a very suburban gated community and um, it's actually a Mormon community and it's very close knit and everybody knows everybody. And But do they really know everybody? <laughs> the, other, the other wives, the other men, they don't know any, they don't know anything about your lifestyle. They don't. Um, and I kind of just keep to myself with me and my family. That's just kind of how we are. So it kind of works out. That's, that's so, um, I mean, that's how Arizona is kind of anyways. Everybody kind of like sticks to their, minds their own business or, you know, doesn't really get Big involved. Big difference like compared to Texas where everybody's like, hey, y'all, come over to All my back All up in you. your business. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So now I got to ask this. So how do you find a sugar daddy? How did this all come about? Usually you find... Um, There's women out there that really think... I've talked to them. I said, you know, well, I'm going to be interviewing a sugar baby. And they really want to know how they can find one. And I'm not even sure if... You know, obviously, this lifestyle is not for everybody. Um, I think that there is this... You know, I think people ha think they fantasize about what the lifestyle would be like. But I don't think that they really know that you know, there are sacrifices and there are, it's commitments and. It is commitment. There is sacrifice. Um, you know, with everything, you've got to give and take with everything else in life. It's the same thing with the situation. They're going to want, you know, a lot of your time. They're going to want you to be really invested in them and you still have your own life. I mean, are you exhausted girl? I mean, to, cause just even having a husband and keeping a husband happy as far as not even intimately, but just to be present and talking, communicating and carrying on a whole normal, quote unquote, normal lifestyle. I love it. I feel like it fulfills my life. In what ways? It makes my life full. Most people um, kind of just go day by day and they have things going. Every day I've got something going. I've got something to look forward to. In my personal opinion, I've got something, you know, good going for me. It's always something new. Every day is a new adventure. It's just, I never really know what's going to happen. Sometimes, you know, flowers will pop up at my job or a card um, in the mail that will say to the sexy boss lady, and there'll be a $300 gift card for a flight to Vegas and tickets to um, Key West in Florida and $500 cash. 
and a little kiss and a nice little note. <laughs> and <laughs> and does that mean you got to start packing your bags and because there's a trip plan? You just got to go in November. <laughs> What's the most expensive gift that you've gotten? A Tesla. A Tesla. Okay, nice. That's the one you drove up in. It is. <laughs> that P85D. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to um, how this happens. How, do you how did you find your sugar daddies? I've heard that a sugar daddy actually picks you. They do. Instead of you going out and thinking that you're just going to pick up a sugar daddy somewhere. Most definitely. They, they, you can feel them looking at you. Most of the time, um, it's not going to be when you're dressed in your, you know, workout gear and your ponytail. It can, um, but most of the time, it's going to be when you're pretty dressed up, feeling your best, just being yourself, just feeling good. Do you go to specific bars? Because I think that's, no? You, no. you don't go and sit at the end of a bar somewhere? Oh, no, most definitely not. I don't ever go searching for them. Usually, like I said, they do seek you out. You'll be at the grocery store or the gas station pumping your gas or the checkout line at Walmart or- A sugar daddy goes to Walmart? Girl, they sure do. <laughs> sure do. So you find shocked. most of them at Target, though. <laughs> okay, so- um, what do your eyes cross? Like, the, the you guys, can feel them looking at your you. Eyes Usually meet. they'll look you up and down and you can kind of, you get this sense, like you kind of get this feeling of this energy of them just, I can't even explain. You That's different feel, than yes. if you see somebody else that you're attracted to. Most definitely. And are you attracted to this like person? It's almost like they're looking at you and they see what they want and they're going for it and they don't care. And they're going to communicate this how? Um, you can tell it in their vivacious, the way they're so... The way they talk to you, the way they carry themselves, you can you can feel it. You can definitely feel it. Um, I myself am. <laughs> I I I like to look them up and down and see what type of shoes they're wearing, what kind of watch they have, what is their belt, <laughs> what brand of tie they have on. That's just me. But <laughs> so you check them out first, and then is this a good indication? He, you guys have. You know, your eyes have met. He's walking towards you. They're usually, yeah. I'm so curious up. about this. They walk up to you. They're usually um, super flirty. Usually it's something really funny or cute. Like, oh, we have a cute phone case. Or, oh, you could have called me instead. Or they usually throw funny little How is that different than somebody else just flirting they're with older you? Because they're older. And they are still pretty good looking for their age. And you can tell by the way they carry themselves about how how they are as a person. Um, you, you can just feel it. You can tell, at least for me. So, so you meet and it's unspoken. It is unspoken. Um, they do have, um, which I, I know of, they do have websites that you can find sugar daddies on, but I've heard those are very unsuccessful, unsuccessful, that it's a lot of um, normal people looking for that glamorous whatever they think they're fantasizing have, that but the they don't have about. the other end of it right um so i've never found that to be too um positive or work out too great for myself but just the grocery store being at the mall um at a really nice restaurant having you know lunch by yourself at the bar okay so okay so you guys meet you exchange phone numbers and then you he calls you, you call him, and you guys see each other. And where is the conversation? When does the conversation take place? Does the conversation take place? It does. It starts as soon as you start talking to them. They're like more behind closed doors at the restaurant. Now you're at dinner. So tell me about this. I got to know. Which part? <laughs> I want to <laughs> know, know how, how he says to you, I'm going to take care of you. Um, you're going to be my sugar baby. How do you say, are you a sugar daddy? Or are you just interested in taking me out? I mean, where, where, how does the conversation take where it's very clear communication that this is an arrangement being set up? The way that I will about this is usually we go to dinner and I let them know that I am very busy. I am a mother. I do have two children. I am a business owner. It is successful and it's a lot of hard work. I do work my business myself. I have other investments and my time is not free. And so they're reading, but even before you even say my time is not free, they're going, this is perfect because she has her, 
she's she doesn't really want to I'm fall not. in love. She does not a, a long term committed day to day relationship. I'm busy. I'm not going to be messaging them all day, blowing their phone up like. And then they else. say what? You, and then it goes from there. Usually they'll go from there and be like, "Oh, okay. Well, so how much would it take for me to be able to spend time with you?" That's the worst thing they can say to you. The worst because. Because I'm gonna go for their balls. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not a, I'm not a prostitute. Thank you. I am. That is the worst. Thing a you can sugar do. baby, and there is a difference. So what you do is you curve them. You let them know I'm not a prostitute. I'm really glad that I. You let them know. I tell them straight out, I'm not a prostitute. I don't have a lot of free time. I'm just looking for a good time, and I'm sure you are too. Okay, so now listeners are going to go, no, that's a prostitute. A prostitute, if you're doing something for money, they're going to say, you're a prostitute. Let's be honest. Married women do it for money. Your husband pays you at the end of the day. (laughs) (laughs) Let's be honest. He pays the bills. He pays the mortgage. He gets your hair done. He gets your nails done. Does that make you a prostitute to your own husband? No, it doesn't. But I do know, honestly, a lot of girlfriends that are married that will say to me that they have to perform, they have to do something because they're really wanting something else. They're wanting, I don't know, they want to purchase something, whatever. Uh, And they know that they have got to be super nice and uh, um, sexy and and really, again, I go back to the word perform, they've got to go perform. And they know when they do this that their husband turns around and, and gives them, you know, but they are married. But um, when you give somebody what they want, they naturally want to give you what you want. It just comes natural. You don't even have to ask. They just see. They know that I like nice things. So after we go out to dinner and we have really good conversation and we spend three hours talking and laughing and having this good time. And we've had one or two drinks. We've had an amazing dinner. We've had this great time. As you leave, you know, you say goodbye and they just hand you money. It's just like that. They just hand you money. I've never asked. I've never asked for a specific amount of money. I've never said I need money for this. I've never said you are paying me. It's just been, I let them know Plain up front, I don't have a lot of time. My time is very valuable to me. So if they say how much, then you say, They're done. I'm out of here. Excuse mm-hmm. me, you politely walk away from the table. If they don't say it, now I guess guys out there, I'm not trying to educate people on how to do this either way, but you just don't, that's something that you don't say. say. So yeah. if somebody was out there actually wanting to be a sugar daddy, they, that has never done it before. And if they're a real sugar daddy, they're not going to say that to you. They're right. not. They're too educated to belittle you like that. So when you get up from your dinner and they hand you money, it's just, you just don't say it. And then you accept it. And when you accept the money without saying, excuse me, what is that for? Then that means there's an agreement. Usually here's how it'll start. They'll hand you money like this is for gas. Oh, I know you drive, um, before I used to drive an Escalade. Oh, I know you drive an Escalade. Here's 200 bucks for gas, because I know it's an SUV and it takes a lot of gas. Oh, well, you spent your time, and I know I'm sure you probably had to pay for a babysitter because you have kids. Well, here's a couple hundred dollars for a babysitter or, or so that you know you can get them dinner or for pizza or something. That's how it starts. And as yeah, a lot of, care for you, a lot of men going. out there just that are in the dating world don't necessarily just walk up to women after dates and saying, here's money for your gas or here's money, you know, Half the time some of them do, some of them dinner. do, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but some of, some of them do, some men do like to take care of women like that. But for the majority, uh, majority of men, I don't think they just walk up and no start handing you money so this is where you know that this is you're looking at him differently too most definitely and usually when they're handing you money like that and they're telling you again they're already a they've been a sugar daddy or Mm -hmm. they have some sense of that type of lifestyle whether they think that's what they're doing or not they already pretty much have an idea you can tell and then you take time before you get intimate most definitely how long for me personally, I need to get to know them. I need to feel comfortable and there needs to be a connection for me. If there's no connection, it's not going to happen. So just because they are rich does not mean that... You're sleeping with them? No. Because they because they picked you. I've met people where I found um, that I did not get a connection with, that I ended up ending things and nothing ever happened. 
Other because it different. really is. It's also about the, the companionship that you have with them as well. It's not just about That's money. That's actually the most important part is the companionship they receive. Next would be well, but, the But you part, too, but. because... That's why I person that all women, but for me personally, that's what I do it for the connection, the experience, that moment for that second life you get to live. Um, okay, so now we're we're moving it right along from the restaurant to the unspoken agreement to a couple of. I mean, even a sugar baby just doesn't put out like that, right? That's true. So now we're talking like, what did you say? A couple weeks, months? Oh, at least a few months. Wow. And they're be... just giving you money all along. Okay. Obviously, when you're not intimate with them, they're not going to be giving you thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, but hundreds here, hundreds there. And this makes and it, it worth up. it. And adds up. Okay. So now let's talk about... You know what I want to talk about. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about this moment. Mm. Do you have to drink when you do this? No. You can be completely sober? Yes. The men that I choose are not, um, they are older, but they're not ugly or like, oh my God, this is not going to happen. Like, it's completely they, they, gross There's out. not a gross factor? No, never. I would never put myself in that situation. And so when it comes to sex at this point, it's something that is built up. You should see the look in her eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Do you have a large appetite for sex? I do. So is that something that your husband couldn't fulfill? Most or he does? He does. So he does. you just want more or different? Both. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't feel, he, he, he feels enough adequate he oh, feels yeah. like he's getting the job done making you happy we even talk about everything i tell him everything 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 so okay so let's go back to the <laughs> after dinner after a couple months uh you go home with them never go home to their house you okay this is very interesting never go home to their house always a resort why never at their house it's a privacy issue it's a comfortability, privacy. It's that fine line where that's not a relationship, a real one. It's a sugar baby, sugar daddy relationship. So you've never been to their homes? No. And they've bought you cars and bags. And businesses. And businesses. Have they invested in... I think you have, they have, you're involved in investments even. As well, with yes, them. I am. And their businesses, and they've taught me about Charles Schwab's accounts and investments and stocks and bonds. And I'm actually 50% owner in one of their companies. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> That's so incredible. That even after um, his thing is that even if one day him and I don't work out or things do end, that I will continue to be taken care of. Because he has admiration and he because loves Because he cares you. about me that much because he's in the, his early 50s. Um, yeah, tell me the ages of the two. Um, tell me the ages of your husband and the two sugar daddies. My husband is in his mid-30s, like myself, um, and the other sugar daddies are early 50s. Early 50s. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. What happens? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so is this an experience that you're like sexually excited for when it happens oh, yeah. because it is a money exchange? I can understand that. It's a fantasy. There's something about it that, that um, you can run with in your mind and make that work for you for the moment, I guess, or for the evening. Uh, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm going out on a limb there. I think everybody fantasizes when they're having sex or they should or, you know, and what you're fantasizing about is totally, you know, your own business. And the men, uh, because they are older, they are such great lovers. They are so, so much more passionate. It is ridiculous. Really? Yes. So are you saying that older men are better lovers than younger men? Most definitely. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you, I'm going to ask you a, well, okay. Talk to me about this sex though. I really, cause I've got one other question that I really want to ask, but what is it like 
when this goes down for the first time. Cause you know, when you're, when you're in a relationship and whatever, you like somebody and this, you know, you have sex for the first time, that's a very exciting, you know, experience and all kinds of different things could be going on. But this right here is an arrangement. Now we know it's done at a hotel, not at anybody's house. And is this something that you guys just jump into and enjoy? What happens? Uh, well, usually it'll start out, um, They'll let you know that they got a resort for the evening. That doesn't always mean that that's what's going to happen because okay. that'll happen for a while. You guys will go have drinks, go back, relax. You give them a massage. You guys lay together. You wake up the next morning and you continue with your life and your day. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to happen. Uh, but usually it'll start with dinner, um, a gift, maybe some drinks. We go back to the room. And it just unwinds. It just happens. It's just so very natural. By now, you've built up um, a relationship. You've built up a connection. You've built up that chemistry, and you've built up that sexual tension. That tension. And, and so by that, that point, you just want to rip your clothes off. Really? Mm -hmm. They've provided everything for you. Dinner. You're happy. You're content. You've been given gifts, money, so you, feel you, feel, spoiled. you feel spoiled, you feel like a goddess. Of, like a goddess, yes. Literally. And so I imagine the intimacy is no different. You're a goddess and they worship you. Yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets paid for this. Mm. And she's not a prostitute. This no. is a relationship. I think I'm just a sex addict. <laughs> you, well, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> We're not going to get into love addiction, love and sex addiction, because definitely that's something that would definitely be an episode. But now totally that you definitely. brought that up, though, um, what was your childhood like? Because me, I'm going to obviously being a life coach, power coach, I'm always going to go right back to where all this stems from, because I don't I don't know. But I do want to ask, what was your childhood like? Was there daddy issues? There was. There was. Surprise. There was. I'm shocked. Mm. <laughs> my mom, um, my mom uh, became pregnant with me. My dad was actually married to another woman. Okay. So that's. So you were born into this, mm -hmm. basically. Pretty much into that kind of, I wouldn't say that lifestyle, something completely different. Um, but. But this isn't different. It's, it didn't shock. I mean, you're, you're, this is your, this is your norm mm -hmm. growing up that mom up until I was about, um, I think like five years old, my dad had his own life and then my mom let him know that it wasn't fair and she asked him to choose, he wouldn't choose. So my mom kind of kicked him to the curb and I got my stepdad. So I was raised with my stepdad, he did raise me. I was raised in a Catholic school. I did, you know, all my things. I was a student ambassador. I represented the United States. I did Miss Teen Arizona, Miss Preteen. I grew up just normal like everybody else. I had my stepdad. I did have some daddy issues maybe because, you know, my step, my real dad was married to somebody else. And, and that just confused you? It did. Um, but I was still so little, I didn't really understand. And then um, when I was like seven or eight, my mom had explained to me what was going on. And then I, I understood what, what happened. Back then I was too young. I just didn't know why my dad wasn't coming around. Did you know though that, um, that there was this extra, this, this affair? When I was younger? Yeah, I mean. No, I didn't know until when, did you when I was older. Okay. When and I was did, about like eight or nine or seven, eight, nine, something like that. And I saw him at a, my mom hadn't seen him in forever. I was at a JCPenney and he walked up to me with a little baby outfit and said, oh, I haven't seen you since you were this big. I didn't know who he was. So I took off, told my mom like this weird guy's, you know, trying to tell me he knows who I am. And she's like, do you know who that is? And I said, no. She's like, that's your dad. That's your dad. And that's you your were dad. like, what? I was like, really? So I looked over at him and he, um, the way that I remember dad, my dad as a child looking like um, Cheech um, Marin from Cheech and Chong, <laughs> you know, with a little, a wife beater and a bandana and um, my dad's Hispanic. So that's how I always saw him. Oh so when I saw him years awesome. later, it was like looking him in the face was like knowing somebody that you had known, but you could not place them. And then my mom told me, I was like, oh, okay. Did that mess with your mind? No. Didn't feel weird. Mm -mm. Um, do you have any experience in the porn industry? I do. Okay. And then how did that come about? So did you go from just dating? 
never porn. dated. You just went right into porn. Where did <laughs> you, porn where, how did you lose your virginity? First. This is, I want to know. Um, I was 14 with a boy I had been with for two and a half years. Okay. And, um, I used to live in Texas and I moved to Arizona and he would come every, every break we got from school. He would come see me, come see me, come see me. And finally one day I skipped school. You skipped school. <laughs> when he came to visit. <laughs> And so then you dated and then how did you, you got into porn and then from porn um, you were well, like, I dated uh, for a little while. Um, and when I became 19, um, I was walking around in Scottsdale Fashion Square Mall and a lady approached me and asked me what I was and I was very offended. And she's like, no, no, don't be offended. I'm asking your nationality because I do promotions, you know, for a modeling company and I totally blew it off. And, um, so I, beware anybody, any young women out there that are walking around the malls and somebody walks up and asks you that question. It could be. It could be. Um, so I took her card and um, like I said, me and my husband been married for 10 years. I told him that, you know, I got this card. It's me about modeling and whatever, whatever. And he said, you know, what's the worst thing's going to happen? A, they're a shark. B, it's fake. Or three, it's a good opportunity. So I figured, you know, what the hell? So I called her. It did um, actually open the door to modeling. I did do some modeling for <laughs> car magazines. I, I don't know if we're allowed to say shows. all those names. <laughs> we'll just bleep those out. <laughs> major companies. I worked for a lot of major companies doing modeling. And um, I got a modeling agent out of California. Uh, I would travel. I would stay here in Arizona for a week or two, do some shoots. I would go to California. I would book three of them in a row, stay there for like a week, do those shoots, come back. And I did that for a while. Um, and things were really do doing um, really good. And then I got the opportunity to do some adult modeling for um, flyers for strip clubs or for, you know, parties mm -hmm. or for things in that and here. And then eventually they gave me the opportunity for offers for adult entertainment work. And it's not per se how you think it is like, oh, it's fun. And it's very, very different than what you actually think it is. So not that I want to get into talking about porn, because that's, again, another episode. Um, but, so, but you can say now that you know the difference between really, truly being paid for sex, whether it's doing it through porn and w what the difference that you are not a prostitute. Oh, yes. That you are a sugar baby, mm -hmm. that you're not just saying that you're a sugar baby because you don't want to be called a prostitute, that they're, you, you are somebody that's, you're experienced in this and you are a sugar baby. Yes. Or you were a porn star. Was a porn star, but now I'm a sugar baby. And you were never a prostitute. Never was a prostitute. Never was a prostitute. Or, or an escort, as they call themselves so kindly. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so... I have to ask um, whenever we do this, because I think that there's um, always, you know, we're talking about your childhood and all of that. And I hope that the listeners walk away with, I mean, what would you want them to walk away with? Because I know when I walked away from our first, you know, initial interview about this, I was just uh, really kind of surprised that it wasn't just this interaction of sex and money, um, that being a sugar baby is different than prostitution and that you are a businesswoman. There's really nothing, it's, it's really not so much a money thing as it is an experience for me as it is an experience truly. So if somebody is actually going out tonight and they see an older man with a younger woman, and they sit there and they judge them. Oh, that's just a, they need to keep in mind that they're, that that person actually is getting a lot more out of it. 10 times out of 10, they're not thinking, to judge 10 times out of 10. They're judging, thinking, Oh, he's paying her. Right. He's just, I wonder how much he's giving her is what they're thinking. When in reality it's for her, she's thinking, Oh, okay. I've got investments. He's worried about my life, about me in the long run more so than almost anybody else would be. So they care about each other. People might, we just don't want people to judge. I think 
because you had mentioned that it hurts you also when you're out with your sugar daddy at a, in Hawaii, of course, or <laughs> some other place in the world that you're traveling, that, that people are judging you for this. They do. You see it all the time. They give dirty looks right away. Girl, I just look them in the eye and smile and wink and wave. <laughs> and but that but then inside, you know what they're judging oh, you yeah. for. Like, oh yeah, and they just they just don't even know. It looks right away as soon as they see that you're younger and they're older. Immediately, it, there's no hesitation. Doesn't matter the age group, the sex. It doesn't mad, matter the sexual orientation. Immediately, I think ever. I mean, people out there, they can see. People just judge if it's not their lifestyle then it's abnormal. And I feel like nobody has a normal quote unquote lifestyle. You may be used to your lifestyle. What somebody else's lifestyle is, is, you know, different, different to me. I, w I would go, what? I believe there is no such thing as normal. There, there is no such thing as normal. Um, also, I think that I'm getting the feeling that you're very free in this. And one thing that I'm kind of impressed with your husband, which is different than a lot of um, marriages and relationships out there is there, he doesn't seem to be really possessive over you. And I think a lot of people have that where they think, not that you go out and have sex and have some you know, sugar daddy status or any other arrangement, you're married, you're happy, whatever. But to truly love, is to let somebody grow and experience the things and not try to confine them. confine them. And if you find somebody that allows you to do that and you allow him, does he get to go out and have sex with, have, with, ever, with anybody he wants to? If he wants, as long as he tells me. So he has to tell you, so now this is, if you're cheating if you don't tell the other person. It's all about trust and honesty. And nobody breaks that unless it's just not broken. If you don't break it, you don't have any problems. And do you sometimes have to have sex with all three of them in one day? Or is it like no. one, you know, your husband in the morning and then just so happens, or you know, you're going to see your sugar daddy at night and then so you avoid your husband during the day? Because they're so busy. No, wait, they're so busy that you, they'll tell you, okay, in two weeks on Tuesday, we're going to stay the night at a resort. <laughs> So you pretty much know what night or what day because they are so busy and it's very time. Do for you them. avoid your husband during the morning for that? Do you save yourself for one, whoever you're going to be sleeping with? <laughs> <Did you? laughs> Most of the time I, I want to know. There are a few exceptions. Most of the time I do. Uh, but my husband, like I said, because we speak about everything, he knows. I tell him, okay, Tuesday night, I'm going to go out. I'll be gone the whole night. I'll go and open our business the next morning. You'll have to watch the kids and I'll open. I'll see you at work the next day. Bye. I love you. 10 years married. Um, who is the best lover? Out sugar of the, daddy. The sugar daddy. <laughs> Girl, let it be told. Which one? <laughs> let it be told. The one that knows about everything. Wow. Really? Yes. He brings a bag with him. What? With a paddle. And... You're into all kinds of stuff. Oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> what, what, is, what is a... Um, so, all sugar daddy arrangements are completely different. Yes. But they basically all when and, and other sugar babies are in agreement when you say that it is about companionship it is it's about companionship and it's not always money like i said um sometimes it's life advice sometimes it's going to be gifts sometimes it's going to be other things it's not always money some girls look for other things out of sugar baby relationships and i think you mentioned that there are two different kinds of them ones that are just wild and reckless and there is there's um in, in our community the sugar baby community i call it we've learned that there are two different types of lifestyles there's the ones that are very wild reckless they blow their money um not to be judgmental but most of the time they have a drug addiction um or an alcohol addiction um very quick fast paced money gone um, and then there's the other rest of us who invest our money in ourselves we believe in what we're doing that it's bettering our selves and our future 
Um, we kind of look out for each other. We, it's, it's about doing better, not just doing better financially, but emotionally, personally, all together. I accept that because it does sound like you're obviously, I mean, if you were somebody who needed money, then I think it just, it's just different to be able to sit down and interview somebody who has a business and family and I don't need the money, but I like the money, but you like the money. Uh, so at the end of every interview, as you know, I ask those three questions. <laughs> Let's get them. Where is the love in your story? The love in my story is the unconditional love that they feel for me and how they care about me, as well as the love comes from, it's just reciprocated, it's, it's pure love. They legitimately, truly love and care about your overall well-being for yourself. And um, where is the lie? What is a lie? Uh, the lie would be thinking that um, every time you see an elderly man with a young girl, that he's just paying her for sex. Or, you know, she's just some young stripper, drug crazed girl that, you know, he found on the street and he's having his good time and she's going to be gone. That's usually the biggest lie that people misconceive or that a sugar baby is a prostitute or she's just being paid for sex and that's all that he's using her for. I'll accept that too. And um, what is the truth? The truth is it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> the truth I would say is that um, I'm not sure. That one. Are you happy? Yes. You're not like a depressed person? No. You're just happy? I have everything. Literally everything. I have my family. I have my business. I have my happiness. I have whenever I feel the urge to a quote unquote double second life. I have that, you know, that fantasy life, that excitement. I have that luxurious life. I, it's for me personally, I have it all. And you don't do any drugs? No, none. So your truth is, is life is great. Life is great for a sugar baby. This sugar baby anyways. At least for me. I've got to thank you for being so honest about no problem. this. I've had so many people that had questions regarding this lifestyle. It's a big topic that a lot of people want to know about, but nobody's ever willing to speak about. I think that a lot of people also, I think if there's a woman out there that is struggling, um, that thinks that they can just go out and find a sugar daddy, that, hey, they, they don't realize that you do got to give a lot. It's not just sex. Mm -hmm. And to me, it sounds like just you're in three relationships, I a marriage and two other relationships, and I would be exhausted. I, you know, I would be exhausted, not sexually, not, not, <laughs> not in that way, but just emotionally and having to take care of and connect to just to connect with them and, a, and another human being like that. For me personally, I love it. It, 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 it's very fulfilling to me. I have three separate relationships that I care about them. They care about me entirely completely it's it's just i can't say anything other than it's amazing do you fight with any of them every once in a while we have um a little thing you know here and there or whatever but there's never usually a fight it, they're just so they're so eager to please you and to aim to make you just so happy that it never really happens so they're just always walking around trying to always that's awesome well that's awesome. Until their wife runs up on you. No, they're not <laughs> married. <laughs> this is not the. Are they married? <laughs> one oh is and my one gosh! Is <laughs> Just when I thought that we were going to end the podcast, it got better. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. 
does the wife know about you? She does. Oh my God. And she's okay with this. Well, I mean, not really. <laughs> so is he cheating? Um, well, I mean, is it cheating if your wife knows? It's, and she's allowing it? it? I think that it's, I, think that I guess she, if she knows and she's not asking for a divorce. She stays married to him. Um, she has come, I have seen her a few times and she has confronted me. Um, we've never. Gosh, that's gotta be hard for her. I mean, I, I can see if everybody's in agreement and nobody's doing anything, you know, illegal and everybody's happy and single otherwise, other than you being married. Um, but now that he's married, that's crazy. He is married. Um, he's been married for 25 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is that how he probably stays happy, do you think? Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure he loves her as his wife. I'm going to get her for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, of course. Um, but obviously he's still... Has he had... He's obviously had other sugar babies before you. Um, I've asked him. He said he had one girl that he saw twice, um, that he took her on two dates, and that was it. Um, but that's what he says. Okay, right. So he could not be... Right. Wow. Wow. Well, the plot just thickened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elle, thank you so much. Thank you I for having really me. appreciate this was very enlightening and, um, you know, I don't really judge anybody. I'm always curious about other people's life and it's all a journey for every single one of us. I don't think anybody should judge anybody else unless somebody's, you know, hurting somebody. Um, but, and I, she probably is, uh, she, is she hurting? I don't think so. She seems pretty happy. Oh my gosh. She probably stays with him for the money too. I mean, she's got a nice new Escalade. Right. I'm not sure if her boobs are bigger than mine. But oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> she lives a very nice so lifestyle. So this guy just, right. Okay. So I get it. So that makes sense. Well, again, um, I never thought that the sugar baby lifestyle was truly that you got that much out of it. And I did think that it was really about sex. Sorry for me dragging something across the hallway. <laughs> but I thought it was more about sex and money exchange and that was that. And there was a gross factor and, you know, that's, that's what I thought. Those are most definitely like the most common factors people factor in that they think that how it works. Those are the most common things you get. And it clearly doesn't. I could never do anything like that. The reason why I couldn't is because I can't let a man, I would think that they would feel ownership over me. And I can't, uh, uh, I cannot do that. It's the complete that. opposite. You control everything they do. Well, I'm beginning to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing it for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I'm controlling enough. So controlling enough in my world, not other, not other, not other men. I don't control other men. Hey, I, I am somebody who wants to want a man. I don't need one. I want one. So it's the biggest compliment. But a lot of men have to feel needed. And, and I'm just saying now that I don't know if men are going to agree or disagree, but I think that if they're not talking, they would agree. <laughs> 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 that that's what makes them feel like a man. And so I have to also think that a sugar daddy feels the same way. You are there to make them feel needed and wanted and connected to. And that is, a, that is a, a, not a job, but. They want to be the batter to your cake, but you want to be the icing to their cake. That's how it works. They want to, they want to be the batter, what makes you up and what helps you and what's building you and what's growing you and what's making you and you want to be just the icing the pretty glaze on top they like they like getting credit they like watching you they love seeing grow you like that. grow and flourish and do better they love seeing you do better
they don't want to see some young girl who's throwing her money away on drugs and, and partying they, and right right they right right see that. um and are they needy the men yeah no they're never needy nope they're never like um i need to see you i want to see you got to drop well, everything right now one of them the, the one that is married i've been with him for um almost five years now wow so five year relationship with your sugar daddy 10 year you're a committed woman <laughs> 10 year with your husband and it's just barely been a year with the other new sugar daddy the one that knows about everybody and then your first your first boyfriend was two and a half years mm -hmm. wow and then anybody else was just porn industry um i had one other boyfriend in between that i was with for i think six years wow well thank you so much for coming in and telling us the truth about, <laughs> <laughs> about this lifestyle. And I will share this and, and, um, and post it and just let me know. I'm, I know a bunch of people are going to comment and have questions. So give me a call and let me know. I will. If, if you can answer one or two of them or whatever sure you want will. to, and I'll relay the message. That's awesome. All right, Elle, well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, there you guys, there you guys have it. It's the truth. <laughs>